This week on Digivision, have you experienced what you described as indiscriminate charges by banks anytime in your banking life? Stick around as we ask both the authorities and Nigerians their views, plus an innovator who says when thunder strikes, was the energy saved can power up the whole of Africa for five years. I'm sure you're shocked about that. Just stick around. I am Bayeru Agabi. Still on the show is Digigest and Infotech reports. Hello and welcome to this edition of the show. I am Bayeru Agabi. Firstly, the issue of receiving bank alerts on our accounts is becoming rampant and so bad that most Nigerians are beginning to see the banks as bigger than the regulator, the CBN of Nigeria. For instance, many say that the CBN policy on automated teller machine, that is the ATM withdrawals charges, is not well followed and the Apex banks is doing nothing about it. This is why Ugochi Emmanuel went out to the street to see the truth of Uma Wele. Customer Service Week is an international celebration of the importance of customer service and of the people who serve and support customers on a daily basis. In 1992, the U.S. Congress proclaimed Customer Service Week a nationally recognized event celebrated annually during the first full week in October. Nigeria has similarly joined the rest of the world to mark what is now internationally known as a Customer Week. Though different organizations mark it in different ways, but one critical sector that touches the average Nigerian is the banking sector. In spite of sustained complaints by Nigerians and repeated warnings by the Central Bank of Nigeria to deposit money banks against indiscriminate, illegal and arbitrary charges on customers' accounts, there are fresh indications of an upsurge in the practice by majority of Nigerian banks. For years, banks have been charging customers charges as fees. According to the Central Bank of Nigeria, the fees paid on the automated teller machine withdrawals charges is 65 Naira, a reduction from the 100 Naira that was obtainable before 2012, when ATM's fees was cancelled. Since the reintroduction of the charges by the CBN, Nigerians have continued to express their displeasure over the move, which some say have become indiscriminate and incessant. A number of ATM users who spoke to our correspondent groomed at the new developments. For me, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not happy about it, you understand? Okay. Like, you can see what's going on. Sometimes we go to the bank, we use a different ATM, ATM machine, if they are, a different ATM card. You know, if you, did not, if you make a transaction, then they deduct money from you. And this is not the directive from the CBN. So what I think the government should do about it, or CBN, I think they should... I, I don't know, maybe they should have where people will submit their complaints to, so that they can know what to do about the issue. Though one of the reasons the CBN claimed necessitated to the reintroduction of the ATM withdrawal fees was an attempt to stern abuse of the ATMs by some bank customers. However, the decision does not seem to have gone down well with many ATM users in the country. There was no communication whatsoever informing anyone that there has been a shift in the instructions that came with the initial uh, uh, rules on the, the charges on the fourth transaction at the ATM. Uh, because when the former CBN governor was in place and he announced that provision, the instruction was that after the fourth transaction on other banks' ATM, you'll be surcharged. So it was very clear. There was clear communication with respect to that instruction. But this time around, once you do a transaction outside of your bank's facility, then you are surcharged, which is fraudulent, to say the least. In a bid to show up dwindling capital base under the prevailing economic conditions, most of the banks have not only continued to introduce all sorts of unapproved charges under different names, they now also hide under the CBN approved charges to indiscriminately fleece their largely unsuspecting customers without a care. 
The list of some illegal charges includes such message services as lot fee, stamp duty charges, automated teller machine charges, card maintenance fee, account maintenance charges, money transfer charges, monthly ledger fees, monthly alert fees, over bloated check maintenance charge, and airtime SMS alert fee, among others. As a result, millions of hapless customers have been at the end of the stick, losing their hard-earned money to the unwholesome practices and not knowing who and where to channel their complaint. I feel the pain, as everybody is feeling the pain as well. This day you get a lot of uh, service alerts, either on your mobile phone or, or your internet accounts. Several charges that you cannot explain. And it's becoming very disturbing to everybody who cares about uh, this particular very difficult economic time. But uh, we, 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 we need to look at it holistically. For instance, the ATM charges. And when the decision was taken a few years ago that um, the bank must reduce the charges that um, on ATM to 65 Naira, um, the decision was very popular among the customer because uh, no customer wants to pay for anything anyway. But the decision was not very popular among the service providers because of the dynamics of the industry. Some bank customers who spoke to Acryl said the SMS introduced by Nigerian banks to ensure the security of account status had been turned into a major way of fraudulently profiting off customers. Banks have now been observed to be charging as high as 10 naira per SMS sent to a customer, even when bulk SMS providers in the country offer less than 1 naira per SMS. I'm banking with GTB. Anytime I want to withdraw and there's no GTB bank near me, I have to make use of First Bank. And after we join, like maybe thrice in a day, they have to deduct 65 naira. So, which I don't really like. Maybe CPS should try and talk to them. I don't really like that. And at times, even aside the 65 naira, your alert charges 10 naira, all those stores, which I'm not really, really happy about. I find it aggressive from the bank because 65 naira, even though it sounds small, it can also be used for something. As, Nigeria, as far as Nigeria is concerned. With the Stamp Duty Act already in enforcement by the CBN, there are projections that the total number of direct cash logments in various accounts and banks, the transfer of cash arising from points of sales, automated teller machines, and mobile money transactions, among others, may hit 50 million in volume a day, with an estimated volume of about 2.5 billion daily. Gucci Imano reporting for Digivation Network. Hello, I'm Bayero Agabib. As we face the new society driven by data and information, Cyber Africa provides you a trusted platform. Here we understand how telecoms, the internet, and the media are redefining our world. Cyber Africa, Connected Africa. We all have that one friend that can shall like to borrow. Babes, please borrow me that your bag. Borrow salt. Borrow car. Even borrow touchlight in the middle of the night. But the one that pains me the most. Borrow data. So, I decided to stop all that and introduced my own Boroboro Boro friend to the all-new MTN Data Bundles. Dial star 131 hash to find the MTN Data Bundle plan that's just right for you. And if you're out of airtime to buy data, simply borrow data and pay later with MTN Extra Bytes. As for the other stuff, well, we are still working on it. MC, I have a wedding tomorrow. Please, can I borrow your bowl? MTN, everywhere you go. You're watching Digivation, and I am Bayeru Agabe. For participation or partnership, please text the number on your screen or just reach us via our Facebook. But for now, 
Quiz of the week. Number one, who is the new Director General, that is DG, of the National Information Technology Development Agency, NIDA? Two, who is the new Postmaster General of NIPOST, and when were they appointed? Again, number one, who is the DG of NIDA, that is the National Information Technology Development Agency? And two, who is the new NIPOST Postmaster General of Nigeria? Send your answers to these numbers or our Facebook page. Your prize is Digivision T-shirt, this beautiful Digivision T-shirt, plus a 2,000 Naira worth of credit on any network of your choice. At this point, I hand you over to Fatima Ajayi for DigiJets, followed by Infotech News, that is ICT News for the week. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of DigiJets. I am Fatima Ajayi. Every week on this segment of the show, we bring in different innovators from different parts of the country. But this week, we have a very, very talented and fascinating inventor in the studio with us. His name is Obagwanaya Emmanuel. Obagwanaya is an electrical engineer from the Institute of Management and Technology in Enugu. He has invented something very, very interesting. I know you really come with it. You get to know what it's about, but you know what? This time around, it's not about Polero. It's not about anything you can imagine. It's about something that happens once in a while. It's thunder. Emmanuel generates electricity from thunder. And he says, when thunder strikes once in five years, it can actually power the whole of Africa. Just once. Sounds really interesting. But let's get to know more from him. Hello, Mr. Emmanuel. You're welcome to this exhibition of the show. Thank you. Do you really want to tell us what actually made you think of doing something like this? I came up with this idea on the 1st of October 2004 when I was in SS3 first day. Yeah, that was when I was just, in, it just came like a flash of an idea, you know, just like a flash of an idea on how to generate electricity from thunderstorm. Although that day it was raining, you know, and then there was thunderstorm, we were running into the classroom just to, to see for, you know, she was like, yeah. I was actually outside looking at the, the lightning and the thunder. And, so, and I did just came that this is how you can convert lightning to electricity. I continued my research in 2006, 10th of March, I produced my first non-working prototype. So, transmitted. You, are you saying, like, if you put this outside when, it, when it's under the lightning, it can actually absorb electricity for the whole of Africa? Actually, not this very prototype. This is a non-working prototype. Okay. It explains how the massive one will be built. Okay. Like, what is the capacity of this little one? Now, this very one now cannot generate any source of power. Okay. It so what is it for? It's just a pictorial sketch. For what the, how the, the natural bigger one looks lightning like? lightning energy converter is going to look like. Here we present our lightning array store that we trap the lightning from the atmosphere. Now, this is, here represents our mask. Now, this... Um, and, and this um, and mask we are seeing here now represents our mask. Now this red cable here represents our armored cable that will transmit the energy, the lightning energy, down to the unnesting zone. Here in the unnesting zones, we have five unnesting zones here, which will be built by the Russian, British, US, Germany, or China. They are the one that will build the storage zone for us. Now this storage zone is going to, each one, we retain energy for 8,928 hours, which is 5 years and, and 30 days. So 5 of them here will be able to retain energy for 5 years and 30 days. Now each of them here is going to step down from 1 megavolts to whatsoever the country needs. But I suggest Nigeria to, to step down from 1 megavolts to 380 kV because currently Nigeria is generating 380 uh, 330 kV and then they step down to 132 kV and then they step down to 33 kV then they step down to 11 kV and finally they step down to 415 volts we still have reserve of 
670 kV left, which is enough to feed other countries like Libya, Kenya, Mozambique, South Africa, and other African countries will benefit from this uh, Omega. That is why it should be connected to or transmitted to their international grid, where the whole of uh, other African countries will generate. We have a steady power supply for five years. Do you really have confidence in everything Mr. Emmanuel just spoke about? Exactly. I'm very, very interested and very happy that I can see. In a scale of 1 to 100, what is their confidence rate? 100% Wow. Ah, because it is my first time to see a young engineer like this is talking with, with confidence. And you know, I don't know we are all Nigeria. We know some of the engineers, some of the end, they wear cool, they wear tie, but in him, I can see that he has that talent. There is a great talent, that is what he can do. But I'm only praying to God that the federal government can come up to assist him. Because it's not only to kill somebody at the out of education, but that we have so many of them along this day who has no financial problem, who can you know, support themselves. But that we are with the people, if you don't only federal government, if it's council law, the German, they can come up to assist them. So I'm really proud to see whatever that those are uh, some of the products that you brought here to showcase what you can do. So actually I'm very, very happy to see that. So it's a young event of yeah. I'm so happy. I'm so very, very happy. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Adeno. Nice talking to you. We want local content. We have different local content every day on this segment of the show. Mr. Emmanuel has just told us that this simple thing can actually power up all of Africa for five good years just by once in the last thing. It's really interesting. It's really not just going to change the way Nigeria works, just like just by providing electricity, but it's definitely going to cover employment opportunities issues because they definitely need different people to be able to get them jobs in different fields of the country. Oh yes, thank you very much for staying here on this show. Just add from Mr. Emmanuel Adonaya. He has told us how well this is done and what it will be needing, which is support from both the government and the private office. See you next week as I remain Fatima Ajay. At a critical time like this, when the Nigerian economy is facing recession, the capital market no doubt plays a crucial role. Hence, stakeholders must take a look at things differently if it must help achieve the change maximum of the President Mohamed Buhari's administration. It was in this regard that the Postmaster General of the Nigerian Postal Service, NIPOST, Barrister B.C. Adebuyi, restated his commitment to help improve service delivery of the bulk post venture in order to curb necessary delays in its service and to provide customers satisfaction. The Nigerian Postal Service, under my leadership, has put in place machinery to strengthen the bulk post venture in a manner to curb unnecessary delays in its service delivery as we seek to satisfy our teaming customer. To this end, Nigerian Postal Service has deployed, we're about to deploy, we are working, it's a work in progress. The Postmaster General, who was speaking at the 2016 Bulk Post Customers Forum and a dinner held at the Sheraton Hotels Lagos, noted that NIPOST will continue to build sustained relationship with the capital market industry and other stakeholders with a view to delivering premium postal services while urging registrars and relevant regulatory bodies to be more committed on their part. The partnership between NIPOS and other key players in the capital market industry has come a long way. Over the years, sacrifices have been made by our stakeholders. However, because of our yearning to provide satisfactory world class postal service to all our customers and ensure that business relationships built over the years have painstakingly sustained, NIPOS is continuously leaving no stone unturned, seeking new frontiers to improve service delivery. The event, which attracted a cream of personalities within NIPOS, logistics, and courier operators, 
registrars and the postal ecosystem in general provided stakeholders an opportunity to further reflect on how best to grow the sector. This, according to the general manager, Bulk Post Venture, Mr. Mike Umo, is critical in the financial growth of the post. So I, I, I want to say, with all due respect, that if company, you know, decide to print something less than what is expected from them, in line with the set rule, it is the responsibility of the registrars who handle their, their job to tell them, look, this is not in line with what SEC does. Well, maybe they have little or no power in that area. But of course, SEC on its own would have carried out its oversight function. But where they are not doing, that is why we picked the topic and that is why we are here. Other speakers also shared their thoughts on how to ensure greater efficiency and growth within the bulk post system. We have achieved 80% success in computerization of our post office boxes as well as our private mailbox. Our set target is by 17th December, we would have computerized all our PMBs and all our PO box. The interest for NIPOST was that as indeed in every other part of the world where we had declining consumer mail, bulk mail, and direct marketing, direct mail by extension was growing. And the Universal Postal Union, who are very strong allies of the Nigerian postal system, had advised NIPOST's management at the time that they needed to positively engage select sectors within the private sector who they believed could help in improving the fortunes of the mail service. With the evolution of electronically driven processes and mailing systems, postal administrations the world over are now facing series of challenges in an attempt to achieve efficiency and excellent quality of service. Hence, opportunities such as this provided by the bulk post venture would not have come at a better time. For Nigeria's economy to recover and bounce back to normal, the present administration of President Muhammad Buhari has been called to shift attention from oil and work assiduously on how to leverage the power of broadband technology. The 2016 Nigerian ICT Impact CEOs Forum and other awards had its fifth edition at Sheraton Hotels Lagos with the theme Broadband Deployment Impact on Nigeria's Economic Recovery. Has in attendance the Nigerian Communications Commission, National Information Technology Development Agency, the Minister of Communications, Barrister Adebayo Shitu, among others. The Executive Vice Chairman of the Nigerian Communications Commission, Professor Umar Odambata, well represented by the Director of Public Affairs, Mr. Tony Ojobo, says presently the broadband penetration is about 30%, and according to the National Broadband Committee projection, there will be 30% increase in broadband penetration by 2018. You may as well know that Nigeria is doing very well in ICT generally. Uh, but the raising of the economy has actually indicated that 10% has added 10% to GDP in the last revision that was done. This figure has continued to grow in the first quarter of this year. A report by the National Bureau of Statistics indicated that more than 1.43 million was generated by the ICT industries in the first quarter of 2016. This is an indication of how ICT could provide a veritable training for the participation of the economy. We are being guided by the actions of the National Broadband Committee, which has provided a target of 30% penetration by 2018. Speaking at the event on how broadband deployment could act as a catalyst to jumpstart Nigeria's early economy, the Director General of NIDA says ICT is the most veritable alternative to oil because there are many hopes and opportunities in the ICT sector 
meant to be developed by the government as there are many countries without natural resources that are doing well such as China, Taiwan among others. The Minister of Communications, Barrister Adebayo Shitu, haven't given his welcome address. As the chairman of the occasion says, the ministry is ready to support all stakeholders in the industry, assuring them that the roadmap will be favorable in order to innovate and make progress. The Ministry of Communications is really welcome and to support all stakeholders in this industry. I would also assure you that our roadmap will soon be unveiled. And I will try, once it's unveiled, to give all stakeholders copies so that we can look at the contents of the roadmap and see in which way you can have something to do. Broadband technology is an essential tool for empowering people, create an environment that nurtures the technological and service innovation, and trigger positive change in business processes. Thanks so much. That is the show for the week. If you have any comment, please send them to bayeragabi at gmail.com or better still, you can answer our quiz via our Facebook page or text the number on your screen. Or till next week, please reach bayeragabi at gmail.com. On behalf of everyone here, peace.